Today, I'm going to introduce you to scientific notation. Now, it's just a, a way that scientists and mathematicians use to write very large and very small numbers. The goal of this video is that after the video, you will be able to write numbers in scientific notation, convert numbers from scientific notation back to standard form, and fix incorrectly written numbers in scientific notation. This is what scientific notation looks like. The first number has to start with a digit, a single digit from one to nine. It can be followed with a decimal and other numbers. It does not have to be followed with a decimal and other numbers. After that number, you're gonna have a time sign, whether it's an X or a dot, and a power of 10. The power of 10 is gonna tell you how many times you move the decimal to put the number back in standard form. And that's actually what we're gonna start with. If the exponent on the 10 is positive, you're gonna move the decimal to the right, making the number bigger. So let me show you, 1.79. And then I'm gonna move the decimal one time, two times, three, four, five, six, seven. And here's the new location of the decimal. What am I gonna put in the empty spaces? Zeros. Alrighty, and so my number is gonna be one, seven, nine, followed by five zeros. Not seven zeros, five zeros, because that decimal had to go around the seven and nine first. And then if you want to put commas, you just start at the end and go one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma. There you go. All right, if the exponent on the 10 is negative, your decimal is going to move to the left, making your number smaller. So again, I'm going to rewrite it out here, and then I'm going to take that decimal and I'm going to move it this direction seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's where my new decimal is going to be, followed by the zeros for the empty spaces. So this will be one, now I get six zeros, and then one, seven, nine. It's that simple. Your turn. Pause the video and do this and come back and see how you did. All right, here I go. I'm going to move this to the right because the four is positive. I'm going to move it one, two, three, four. The new decimal is going to be at the end. When the decimal is at the end, I do not need to show it. And then on the other one, I'm going to rewrite it again, except this time because the three is negative, I'm gonna move it to the left, one, two, three, put two zeros there, and rewrite my number, zero, zero, two, three, two. How'd you do? Sometimes people freak out when they don't see a decimal. It's like, ah, what do I do? Well, the decimal's at the end of the number, just like a period would be at the end of a sentence. So for this one, you have your five, and the decimal is right here. And then you just move it six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put zeros in all of those spots. And I believe that number ends up being five million. And then the other one, exactly the same thing. You've got your decimal at the end of the five. It's right here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you have this right here. So it ends up with a decimal, five zeros, and then the five. All right, now let's go the opposite direction, taking the number that's in standard form and writing it in scientific notation. I have a quick way to do this. I ignore the commas, please do that. And then I put a slash right after the very first digit. And then I underline from that to where the decimal is, which in this case is at the end of the number. Alrighty. And then I write it six. I put a decimal where that slash went. And then I write all the other non-zero digits until I get to a line of zeros. And then I stop. And then I say times 10 to the power of. Now, basically, the decimal's here and we wanna get it all the way over here. So how many numbers does it have to go around to get it there? So you're just counting all the numbers that you underlined. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. There you go. One of the most common mistakes people make is that they do the 10 to the power of how many zeros they see at the end. But that's not gonna get your decimal to go all the way back to where it should have been. You try this one. All right, here we go. Slash underline 4.57 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 to the power of 8. All right, let's look at some small numbers. 
Even though the number is small, I'm still going to put a slash right after the first non-zero digit. So right here. And I'm going to underline from there to the decimal. It's just that this time it's going this direction. Now I'm going to ignore this number because he's on the outside. Next, I'm going to write 2 and put a decimal where the slash is, 5, 4, times 10. Well, if the decimal is right there between the 2 and the 5, how many digits would it have to go around to get back to where it should be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so since it's a small number, since I would have to move it to the left, we're going to say negative 5 right here, negative 5. Your turn, pause the video, do this, and come back. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put a slash here and then go to the decimal. And I'm gonna write this as 4.04 .04 times 10 to the negative, one, two, three, four, four. Soon you're gonna be multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting in scientific notation. And sometimes the answers come out not in scientific notation. And what I'm talking about is, if you remember, scientific notation has to have a single digit number right here between one and nine. This has a 12, so that's obviously not in scientific notation. So all I have to do is I just need to move my decimal in one, making the number smaller, going from 12.04 to 1.204. But if I'm going to make the number smaller, I'm going to balance it out by making my my exponent bigger. So if I went in by 1, I'm going to make my exponent bigger by 1 and say 10 to the power of 5. And some people might be freaking out going, wait a minute, is that really, does that work? Sure. If I have 12.04 times 10 to the fourth, I'm moving the decimal four times, which gives it two zeros at the end. If I had 1.204 and I need to move it five times, one, two, three, four, five, guess what? I still have two zeros at the end. Those two numbers are the same thing. Your turn, try it. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna move it in by one and I'm going to make, I, if I made that smaller by one, I have to make this bigger by one. Smaller by one, bigger by one. Just that simple. Sometimes you'll get numbers that are too small. And now I need to bring the decimal in here. So I'm actually making that bigger by one. When I say by one, I mean one decimal space. So if I made that bigger, guess what I have to do to the exponent? I have to make it smaller by the same amount. So now it becomes 2.307 times 10 to the third. And again, if you expanded both those out, you're gonna get the same number. Your turn, try this. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna move the decimal one, making the 0.7 bigger as a seven. And since I made it bigger by one, I need to make the exponent smaller by one. So that's times 10 to the seven. What happens if my exponent is negative? Well, here you go. I need to take this, make him bigger by one decimal point. So now it's gonna be here which means I need to make him smaller. Well, what is negative four minus one? Negative five. All right. Well, here's a freebie. Have you ever had an old calculator or you're on your phone and you get a number that looks like this? Well, that's scientific notation. What that E stands for is times 10 and what the 15 stands for is the exponent on the 10. So that right there would be 4.32 times 10 to the power of 15. I challenge you to grab your phone or an old calculator and see if you can get it to do something like this. All right, now it's time to go and have some fun.